So Nico has a new player request here. They say, most commonly seen question on Facebook. I'm level 80, now what do I do? Pretty big topic, but I think a fun one to kick off with. In this video, I'll give you guys my take on a quick start guide that will get you from basically nothing to being in a really good spot where you can play and access a ton of content and you'll know what you want to do. So I'm assuming that the person who's asked this question is totally new, all right? I'm assuming that this is the kind of person who just picked up the game today on a whim. This is someone who has no living world content unlocked. They haven't been able to pay for any of that. Though I am assuming you have the most recent expansion, Path of Fire. You're not a totally free-to-play person. I'm also assuming that the people watching this guide like have no interest in PvP or World vs. World. Those two areas of the game can give you a lot of sense of direction and things to do, but obviously you wouldn't be asking this question if you knew you were into them. You'd just go play them. Uh, and I'm assuming you have no money, no crafting disciplines, no nothing really going on. No friends in game really even either. You know, maybe one or two that introduced you to it. So the question is, what's next? First, I do want to give you a cautionary tale. I'm hoping that anyone in this situation hasn't hit level 80 because they just used a level 80 booster, right? I hope you hit level 80 because you actually played good chunks of the core game. In many ways, it's kind of old now, but it's still a really strong experience for actually teaching you steadily about the profession that you picked. And that is so important to know about. If you just skip instantly to level 80, you would have unlocked a ton of skills, a ton of weapons, a ton of traits, and you've probably not seen or used nearly any of them. Hell, you've probably not even moused over most of them. And to go do that all now in a giant wall, it's just gonna go in one ear out the other. Remember that in Guild Wars 2, build craft is a big part of the experience. Every character's build has at least 18 passives rolling in the background at any time. If you're in a position where you don't remotely understand any of that stuff, like not even a little bit, and you're intimidated, well, you're kind of missing out on a huge part of the the magic of the game. I suggest you go back and just play steadily and pay attention as you unlock stuff. You'll get so much more out of the experience as you go forwards. You know, you should never be scared to make your own builds when it comes to solo gameplay, uh, which is like 99% of what you're going to be doing in these earlier hours anyway. So, what do you do when you hit 80 and hopefully you've got a grip on your character? You know, I'm not saying be an expert, but a little bit of knowledge. Well, first I would say definitely play the expansion stories. Maybe the core story bored you. I know it bores a lot of people. You weren't able to stomach it for very long. You should understand that that doesn't matter. You can just skip a bit past that and go straight into the expansions. Open your hero panel, go to the story journal, and trigger either Heart of Thorns or Path of Fire. Heart of Thorns being the first expansion, Path of Fire being the second. From there, you'll get your little green starburst, follow it, and away you go. Now, you might be wondering as well what all these other sections of the story journal are too. Those are living world releases. They're content patches that were added for free as the years went by. But now, if you want to go back and play them, you have to pay gems for them. And that's kind of annoying, right? Because clearly the Living World Season 2 story here takes place before Heart of Thorns. So what, I just need to skip over that? But I have to pay gems to go back and experience it? This fact of the game leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. My advice here is to ignore all of that junk. Ignore the Living World. Yeah, you'll be jumping ahead a little bit on the story and things might not make perfect sense anymore in that department. You will probably find yourself surrounded by characters you don't really understand and a threat about a dragon or a god that you don't understand. Hell, let's not kid ourselves, a lot of people skip the core story so they're gonna be in that situation anyway. But as far as getting caught up in Guild Wars 2 and having a fun, decent experience quickly starting out, I really don't think the Living World stuff is worth it. Do it later if you start to feel more completions about things at that point. Now to be clear, I'm not suggesting you skip Corteria. If you're very new, definitely take your time in those original maps. Participate in map completion. Do the early dungeons if you like. Get to grips with the game and have fun. You might even want to set up some alternate characters and try new professions. Then, when you're ready to move on into the post-80 world, which is what this video is about, go to the expansion content straight away because it's in the expansions that there's a lot of fun to be had. You'll go to really beautiful environments, you'll experience the new elite specializations and unlocking those, progressing your character further. You'll spend a good amount of time in purely level 80 combat environments, which you didn't get up much of in core. 
You can immerse yourself into the new situation of the story pretty fast and you'll be able to pay attention and I recommend you do. And they'll give you tangible benefits too. Most importantly, in the form of the mastery system. Masteries are entirely new capabilities your character will now be able to engage in, like gliding, which was kind of the big feature of Heart of Thorns, but also being able to survive in toxic gas or jump on mushrooms or travel through sand portals, stuff like that. There are a lot of mastery abilities that you can go for, and you train them basically with XP. So experience was used to get you to level 80, and after 80, you can now use that XP to build up these new masteries. While you're actually out there in Tyria, and you mouse over another player, you'll see a number next to their name. That's their mastery level, and they got it from this feature. Building out your masteries and engaging with that can give you a lot of sense of direction for a really good long time. You don't have to max all of the basic expansion masteries immediately, but starting to canvas them and building them up should feel really gratifying. Honestly, they did those parts of the system very well. So again, focus on the X-Pax, get through that stuff, you'll have a blast, especially learning about your elite specializations, which are essentially subclasses that unlock even more build and skill capabilities for your profession and can change it up in a lot of exciting ways. And if you're really uneasy about playing the story out of sequence, you should understand that a huge chunk of the story, the first season of Living World, isn't even playable. Even if you go through the drudgery and all the money of trying to unlock all the Living World and do it all in sequence, you'll still be missing a good chunk of it. I know, it's ridiculous, but that's the state the game's in. Cast those thoughts aside for now, go play the X-Packs. So, just for what it's worth, if you skip to the second expansion, Path of Fire, uh, it is kind of a quicker start. What that will do is unlock mounts for you, that, that's that expansion's masteries, and mounts kind of give you a free ride everywhere else in the game. Like, if you take mounts back to the core game, uh, you can travel and map comp and do all kinds of things there much faster. If you take mounts back to the first expansion, then there's all these things that you should need to be able to glide for, or you should need to be able to bounce on mushrooms for, and there's all these precise fun mechanics going on that now that you have mounts, you can just skip it all, and you'll just blast through the X-Pack. So, if you're looking for an inauthentic experience that just rapidly moves you through stuff, yeah, you can start with Path of Fire. A word of warning though, once you unlock masteries on your account, like once you get these mounts, they are stuck unlocked on all of your new characters forever. So what that means is you will never be able to have like a real, normal, so to speak, experience of the original expansion, especially Heart of Thorns. You'll be constantly required to have high amounts of self-discipline and to resist using these super overpowered movement tools instead of all the Heart of Thorns expansion specific stuff. So my real recommendation, if you're looking to get super into Guild Wars 2, do play the two expansions in their correct orders. You'll get mounts much later down the line, and that might feel bad when you see everyone else has mounts, but do give the authentic route a shot. Now, as you do this, or perhaps once you've finished doing this, uh, my number one suggestion about what you should be focusing on at this point of hitting level 80 is to get a useful set of gear fully complete. Like, get your character to a place where it is strong enough to participate in basically all the content available. Getting that first gear set is a really valuable objective. Not only will you find all the story is getting easier, but you'll be able to go to group endgame content with confidence. You'll be able to enter big money-making areas of the game, like Fractal Dungeons. You can engage in more buildcraft and tweak the way your character feels and plays, like very dramatically, more than in most MMOs. You'll be able to afford all kinds of pretty new skins, playing raids if you like, and whatever new content the devs add with their patches that I spend so long on my channel talking about. And here it's your lucky day really, because Guild Wars is all about giving you good, fast access to decent gear, and then not invalidating it with future patches. Like some of the gear I'm about to talk to you guys about getting is the exact same stuff many of us veterans earned years ago, like in 2013, and it's still valid. Believe me, you want it. Unfortunately, the game has become so complicated over the years with so many places to get so many items and so many currencies and so many crafting disciplines. Uh, suddenly, you kind of need to look at a guide to know exactly how easy some of this stuff is. But it is easy, I promise. Again, I'm assuming you have no living world, 
You're not going to be playing PvP. That's not your cup of tea or world versus world. I'm even going to assume that you have no money almost. And so you've got no crafting disciplines. Crafting disciplines are a good place to get stuff long term. But as a quick start, save that objective for later where you're a bit more into the game. And I'll also assume that you don't really have any close friends that will carry you through raids and fractals and allow you to like sequence break and skip. First big topic. You've probably noticed that there are colours of gear in the game. There's blue and then green and then yellow is rare. And then you've probably also seen exotic. That's orange tech stuff. The truth is, if you're very good at build craft and you've got a lot of really competent friends, you can actually be even the toughest content in this game in just blues and greens. But people will expect more of you. Realistically, you should look for exotic gear. That's orange. Or there is another tier above it known as ascended. The difference between them is this. Ascended is slightly stronger than Exotic, and it has some nice additional quality of life perks built into it. But the thing with Ascended is, it's really long term and tough to get. A big mistake most new players make is they obsess over Ascended when they really don't have to. Exotic is already very badass, well-statted gear. That is what you should be focusing on right now. A bit of backstory about this game, when it launched, Ascended gear didn't exist. The devs kind of just threw it in there as a bit of a Hail Mary to add meaning to the first year of updates. It deliberately wasn't really meant to be that much better than Exotic, but it was for people who wanted to go really hardcore. You don't need to put that kind of pressure on yourself. I think the full difference between Ascended and Exotic is like 12% in stats, and I can promise you, understanding the fractal that you're playing or the raid that you're playing or whatever you're doing understanding your character's build and pressing your buttons fast and, and correctly will account for any difference between ascended and exotic by a long way be happy with exotic which is most of what you need this game doesn't even have an officially supported inspect feature so it's not like people are looking at you and exotics and discriminating against you they are good enough especially in the first like 200 hours or so Second, you should understand that gear in this game has its rarity, which defines, you know, how strong it is necessarily, but also always comes bundled with attributes. And those attributes augment and scale your skills differently. So some gear will come bundled with healing power, which means that your healing abilities get stronger, while other gear has, say, condition damage, which means your debuff and damage over time effects are stronger. Other gear might have critical damage, so you want to be a little bit careful here. But don't worry, there's one universal stat type that all nine professions love, and you cannot go wrong with. That is Berserker gear. And so a big recommendation from me, you don't have to do this, but is to get a set of Berserker gear of exotic rarity on whatever you're playing. That doesn't mean go exclusively for Berserker gear. You can play around and get the other stuff too. Again, this is all going to be pretty cheap what I tell you here, but do try to get that baseline. Maybe you're listening to this video and thinking, well, I don't want to play a damage guy. I want to play like a healer, for example. Well, that's totally valid too, and you can do that right now as soon as you hit level 80. There's kind of a misconception about Guild Wars 2 that it doesn't support that playstyle and you shouldn't be getting that gear. You can. I'll point out to you guys that every single character for free gets two build templates. I suggest that you set one up as a berserker thing so that you can always do damage and play that role on whatever you're doing and you can assign your second equipment template to a more specialized gear set like something that's maybe tankier or does condition damage or is uh, say the aforementioned healer. Maybe go for two sets instead of just one here at the start. So let's run through the gear slots and where to get them. First looking at armor. Well well, you can always go to the player trading post. With everything I'm saying here, that is an option. But do be careful that you're really paying attention to the filters you put in there. Like, make sure you are actually buying level 80 gear. And make sure you do sort by price so that you don't spend tons of gold on something when you didn't have to because there's actually something else that's much cheaper. And there are a lot of those traps on the trading post. There's a bunch of really cheap armor on there, which is colloquially known by the community as named armor. So on screen here, you can see I'm on the Guild Wars 2 wiki page for the named armor, where they've actually listed out all the stat types that are available and what you'll see them called on the trading post in game. 
So here, for example, you can see that Berserkers, for light armor users, is called Zed's armor, right? So if we type into the trading post the word Zed, you'll see that there's a ton of really cheap, just a, a few silver, Zed's armor. This is incredibly good armor that basically in the course of one or two dailies, you'll be able to buy. If you want to get Berserker, that's a good choice here, but there are some other stat types as well. Maybe you can consider there are some Condi stat types like Carrion and Rampages and Rabid. The only other one that I really recommend here is actually the Dyer set. So, for example, in the medium section for Dyer, we can see that's Errol's armor, and you could type Errol into the trading post. Dyer is a condition damage set, so it's about doing damage over time. Do consider it if you like that playstyle, and why I especially enjoy it is because it's bundled with two very defensive stat lines. It's also got toughness and vitality on there, so you're going to be obscenely tanky. If you play with really low frame rates, if you get really high latency or lag or ping issues, if you're just generally very new to the idea of MMOs and you kind of play this one very slowly, Dire will see you go very far because you're not going to feel squishy at all and the damage that you do, condition damage, can just ramp and ramp and ramp over time. Don't let me oversell that stat set, there's a lot of really good ones to go for, but out of the named armor, that's the other big one beyond Berserker that I do suggest. I'll include a link to this wiki page down in the description, but you don't really need to go to the wiki on this one. Just use the trading post carefully and sort by price. All this armor will appear at the top of the list because it's so cheap. And if there's ever a better deal, you'd see that too. Now, anyone watching this video who wants to be a healer, you'll probably notice that there is a Cleric's set of armor, that's a healing power set. And sure, pick those up if you like. There are a lot of misconceptions about Guild Wars 2, but let me tell you that healing is a totally valid and fun thing you can do right now. But my main recommendation for the healers actually, is instead to play the 2012 Core Dungeon Ascalon Catacombs. So the Ascalon Catacombs is a level 30 dungeon that is not a challenging or serious experience whatsoever in the game anymore. Power creep over the years and the way that the level scaling works means that this is an incredibly easy dungeon to play. You don't even need a full party of five, just a couple of people's enough, especially if one of them's a veteran. That will get you currency called Tears of Ascalon. You can spend at this vendor here. This is in the main central city of the game, Lion's Arch, with all the Asura gates. Very quickly, you can get yourself a full set of exotic armor, even cheaper than from the TP, which has really good healing stats. That's Magi's stats, and it will come with an amazing rune, the Monk runes, and this stuff will see you out in raids and even the most elite endgame stuff. Just be careful when you're buying, because they also sell Cleric here. You don't want that. It's not that the other healing power sets that you can get really quickly on the TP are terrible, by the way. Just be a little bit careful of toughness, which Cleric's has, if you're going to be jumping into raids very soon, because it can affect boss aggro in some weird ways. You don't need to know all the details right now, I'll probably explain that somewhere else on the playlist if somebody asks the question. If you're not going to be raiding, do whatever you like, really. For what it's worth, doing a lot of those early dungeons can actually be worth good money, so once you get this first gear set, do consider returning to them regularly. The other dungeons offer new stat types too. So if you've been seriously thinking about copying a meta build or you've been advised meta builds online, you might have seen stat types that aren't available here in the named armor set or even at the dungeon vendor. And a lot of that really useful, more specialized stuff is often very expensive to get or tied to specific areas of the world. Well, as far as armor is concerned, I do have one big recommendation for you guys, and that is to go to Verdant Brink. That is the first map of the first expansion. You can get access to it very quickly. And here, as you play the map's events, and particularly the meta events, you'll get currency and you'll get loot boxes that gives you access to armor called bladed armor. Bladed armor is exotic armor that you can right click and select what stat type you like. And basically everything is available here. Like say, vipers. If you're looking to play a really damaging glass, condition damage character, Vipers is kind of the Berserker equivalent. It's been best in slot for years. 
Harriers is another really good healing set for healers who also like to provide lots of boons. This is also where you'll find Diviner's Gear. This is like a gold standard set for end game boon support builds in team content and many classes have used that over time. You'll see you can scroll through the bladed armor list of stat selectable stuff for a long time. Most of what you want will be here. Three in particular, if you watch a lot of my builds and my suggestions, are the Marauders set, which is a flat damage set, the Trailblazers set, which is another condition damage build, and the Celestial set, which is an all-rounder. Now, those three stat types are some of my favorites for general solo open world quality of life gameplay. Those can be great sets to go for. But as I said before, buildcraft's a big fun part of this game. So make your own decisions, have fun with them. One little wriggle for bladed armor is the chest piece isn't actually available on the vendor. It's a reward from the meta itself, which you'd be doing for the currency anyway. It won't be a problem for you, but I should mention it. I'll also add that you can buy a headpiece with any stat selectable stuff at Exotic from the trading post. It was added with the Icebrood Saga, which also did a couple of weapons too. Keep an eye out. So there you have it. So that's armor. That's a little bit of the stat sets. We do, of course, have a weapon to go for. Once again, as I said before, make sure you check the TP. Quite often you can get stuff very cheaply. If you're going for some of the weirder, more niche attribute combos, and some of you guys might be, well, you might have a little bit more of a challenge, especially in a world where you don't have a crafting discipline that you've already spent a ton of money on to get to like level 400 or so, where a lot of these recipes become available. My advice is this. Put yourself on one of those cheap berserkers items or something that's generally close to what you want and there'll be a lot of stuff that's really near and be content with that while you work on all your other projects and earn your money, go through fractals and so on. What will probably happen is that through the course of the expansions or story or dungeons or whatever, a stat selectable weapon will come your way. If there's a festival going on at the moment, doing the festival dailies will get you a weapon very easily. No matter what festival it is, there's always a good one, and you'll probably get some obscenely shiny skin on top as well. People open to world versus world and PvP can get stat selectable weapons really easily too. Simply go to that content, pick a reward track that looks like it will give you a weapon at the end. You can mouse over them to read the tooltips. You'll see here that all of the dungeon tracks give you an exotic weapon really early on. They're my recommendation. Then as you play the game type, you'll be going through that reward track and eventually you'll get it. Failing that, you should know some stats only come from specific content in specific expansions. If you haven't realized it yet, Guild Wars 2 has one of the best wikis and wiki communities out of all MMOs. It's really good. Playing this game without the wiki is just asking for trouble. You can get to it from the main guildwars2.com website on the top right, or you can bookmark the URL. Or, and this is a brilliant tip, at any point in game, you can type in the chat box slash wiki, press enter, and it will take you there. You can even type slash wiki, then ping an item by holding shift and clicking it, say in your inventory, or even items you don't own that you can see on the trading post, press enter, and it will put you on that specific page of where that item comes from and how to get it. Way down the line, when you start trying to go ascended on all of your gear and you have lots of crafting disciplines, doing this will always help you know where you're going and what to do. The last thing to think about are trinkets. Now, the game gets a little bit more exciting here. Remember everything I said a minute ago about ignoring ascended? Well, you kind of don't have to ignore ascended when it comes to trinkets. Here's what's kind of cool. Trinkets are generally much easier to get than ascended weapons and ascended armor. And trinkets are actually where most of the power creep is when you tier your gear up from exotic to ascended. Like the amount of stats you gain from bumping up your armor is almost nothing. But the stats you gain from bumping up your amulet are massive. My advice is to go straight to Ascended on this one. How do you do that? Well, let me explain. Starting with the Amulet, which maybe a lot of you guys watching this video have already got. So every day when you log into Guild Wars 2, you've been getting a login reward. Login rewards are giving you a currency, a time-gated currency, generally speaking, called Laurels. 
Laurels also come from getting achievement points, by the way. So if you've been getting a lot of achievements as you've just been playing and getting to level 80 in the first place, then you really probably do have several sitting around. Head to a Laurel vendor. There's one in each capital city. Here, for example, I'm at the one in Lion's Arch since we've spent so much time here in this video. The Laurel vendor sells a ton of stuff, but you really want to pay attention to this tab filled with ascended amulets. If you don't have enough to pick one up, do bear in mind that the final reward after 30 days of login rewards allows you to choose a specific bonus. One of those bonuses is a massive amount of laurels. You can get like 20 at once, so you might be closer than you think. If you've been playing a little bit of World vs. World, there are laurel vendors over there which have the same wares but slightly cheaper, but you'll be spending a little bit of World vs. World currency too. Make sure you mouse through and pick up the right stat selection here because you'll notice they don't actually use the word Berserker's amulet on this one. You'll have to mouse over the items yourself to be sure it's the combo that you want. As a little note, if you're really comprehensive about side achievements during the X-Pack stories, they'll throw a couple of amulets at you too that are ascended. They just might not be the stat type that you want. Next, let's look at our back piece. The best place to get an ascended back piece nice and early is actually to go on a quest in the two expansions, Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. Each X-Pack offers a collection that you can navigate to in your collections UI here, basic collection, that allows you to build up a back piece based on a different faction. So for Heart of Thorns, there was an ascended back piece for the Priory, for the Vigil, and for the Order of Whispers. Then when Path of Fire came out, there were different back pieces based on Amnoon Independence, supporting Palawa Joko, or supporting the Sun Spears. They're fun, they take you to a variety of different areas, are not too expensive, and importantly, they don't require you to have any high discipline levels. Just don't be too intimidated by the massive amount of basic collections here. Scroll until you see the ones that give you the back pieces, as I'm highlighting on the video. Click the little eyeballs so that they're constantly being tracked on the top right, and away you go. If you get lost on the quests, use the wiki. Ping the items you need, it will show you where to get them. There is another really incredible alternative. If you're not scared of PvP, and if there's a league going on, if you play just a little bit of ranked, you can craft up a back piece in mere moments. This is actually one of my favorites. Unlocking ranked play itself does take some time, but the rewards in there are brilliant, including even more sources of exotic armor every league. You can get three for free. And don't be too scared of PvP. Everyone's on a level playing field. There's no gearing or grinding for stats before you become competitive. You already are. Just go play it. For rings, which are worth quite a lot of stats, you can spend an abundance of laurels and money at the laurel vendor again, but I really suggest instead you do fractals, the dungeon I've already been recommending because it gives you a ton of money. In fractals, rings are actually some of the easiest ascended gear you can get in the whole game. Just playing fractals in general gives you a high chance for those rings to drop for you. You'll get currencies that you can spend at vendors in there, and there's a ton to choose from. Fractals are a bit of a mess at the time of me making this video. There are a lot of robots you can speak to to buy items from. Don't get too confused on this one. I know it's rubbish. Just make sure you look at where I am in the video and you're on the right tab. That leaves us with finally just accessories. You can find a vendor to buy them from from this building here on the eastern side of Lion's Arch. What I'm showing you here is the most efficient way to get this gear for a new account, but there's a wriggle. The vendor is asking for a currency that comes from guild missions. So do try to get yourself into an active guild that runs missions. If you play the full breadth of missions, you'll have enough currency to buy an accessory straight away. Missions only reset once a week though, so you'll probably have to wait a couple of days for reset to pass before then you can jump in again and finish off your second one. You could get lucky and be in a situation where there's no time gating at all here, or you might end up actually having to wait several days. It just kind of depends on the luck of the draw on this one. Getting a guild isn't too hard either. Just ask in chat. There's a subreddit dedicated to it. My own guilds are always recruiting, so you can ask in our Discord. Just find that active community, or else you'll be spending a lot more laurels and a lot more money. 
But with that, you will be done. At this point, you've got an extremely strong character, maybe even multiple templates built out for different play styles and different builds, and the world really is your oyster. My big recommendation if you want money, and money is very useful in Guild Wars for getting a lot of fancy skins, is to focus on Fractal progression. Fractals has its entirely own set of progression to do with infusions and special mechanics in there, which will keep you occupied for a long time. By the time you've finished that, you'll know a lot about the game, you'll be ready for raids, and doing any number of other fun things. If group content isn't really your jam, well, you have the whole open world to explore, you have full exploration and achievements that you can go for in the expansions, and then you should shift your focus to living worlds. You can earn money in the content you currently have access to, to get gems, to open up living worlds, and then playing each patch comprehensively can help you build to the next one. It depends where your joy is, the end game stuff and the challenging stuff with groups of people, or getting access to all the story and environments you can explore. Do focus on building up a crafting discipline, it will make things a lot easier for you. Keep an eye on the top right of your game for anything in orange text. This user interface is telling you about current special events, like festivals or big PvP tournaments or world versus world initiatives and so on. And finally, once you're pretty deep in the game, once you've started getting ascended armor and ascended weapons, you will have been noticing legendary gear. Legendary takes a very long time to craft, is incredibly grindy, but is a pretty big tangible reward for you once you're done with most of the other stuff. And that should keep you hooked for a very long time. So there you have it. That, in my estimation, is what you should do once you hit level 80, and how to kind of flow into Guild Wars 2 and get a sense of what the greater adventure is about. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you've got other questions and requests as a new player, please do let me know, and keep an eye on the playlist. I'll do another one of these videos very soon, and we'll see what you guys ask. Take care. See you next time.